This poem is called The Joy of Winter Thieves. The giggly gang of goldfinches fairy dance their thieving flight above the teasel topping thistles, secretly sucking seeds from the seeming deadheads who long time since had closed up their purple prickle houses for the winter. Underneath tiny and weary grey cumulus clouds, their liquid golden song matched the brightness of the yellowed winged sashes which their fathers wore the year before, when red in face they fertilized their mother's eggs. Little creatures, these smiling thieves, who rob old houses of their seeds, all the while casting flintlock laughter and golden firework sparkles across the windswept winter cliffs. In winter, only playing children can laugh and live and love. Psalm 68, 11 to 14 says, The Lord gave the word, and great was the company of those who proclaimed it. Kings of armies flee, they flee, and she who remains at home divides the spoil. Though you lie down among the sheepfolds, you will be like the wings of a dove covered with silver, and her feathers with yellow gold. When the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was as white as snow in Salmon. Here's a bit of an explanation. Apparently the goldfinches speak of the resurrection of Christ, a non-biblical legend, there are no biblical legends of course, popular in the Middle Ages, related how the child Jesus, when playing with some clay birds that his friends had given to him, brought them to life. Medieval theologians saw this as an allegory of his own coming back from the dead. Well, they would, wouldn't they? In another legend, when Christ was carrying the cross to Calvary, a small bird, sometimes a goldfinch, sometimes a robin, flew down and plucked one of the thorns from the crown around his head. Some of Christ's blood splashed onto the bird as it drew one of the thorns out of his brow. And to this day, goldfinches and robins have spots of red on their plumage. In addition to these fine legends, another says that the goldfinch was seen as a protector against the plague. You know, since classical times, superstition had credited a mythical bird, the Caradrius, I believe it's called, with the ability to take on the disease of any man who looked it in the eye. The Caradrius, that is, a bird with a dog collar, was sometimes represented in pictures as a goldfinch. Indeed, Christ's finch can often be seen in the ancient works of art where the Christ child is holding a goldfinch. Some people think this is to show his humanity to children and others that it offers the worshipper protection against seemingly unstoppable contagion. Actually, I witnessed this particular gang of giggling goldfinches on the windswept coast of northeast England. The South Shields, to be precise. They were grand, and it was a delight to see them. I mostly hate winter, and finding these goldfinches, or rather them finding me, was a surprising delight. This poem needs to be said with surprising delight. I believe these last two lines need delivering with a chilling double shoulder rubbing knowing. Oh, and if you want, do try and say this in Mackham and Tackham accent. South Shields, of course, is in the English county of Tyne and Weir, which of course are also direct references to the rivers Tyne and Weir. Hence in this poem, tiny and weary grey cumulus clouds. Mackham refers to the dialect of the city of Sunderland and the surrounding urban areas of Wearside. Mackham and Tackhams are people from that area who, when working in the shipyards, used to make stuff and then steal it. You know what I mean? Mackham and tack em home. Those naughty Geordies also refer to their neighbours as monkey Mackhams, obviously getting them mixed up with the monkey hangers of Hartlepool, who famously hung a pet monkey dressed up in a sailor suit as a French spy. So anyway, why don't you try and perform this piece in Mackham? It should be fun. Maybe it would go like this then. The joy of winter thieves. The giggly gang of goldfinches fairy dance their thieving flight. Above the teasel topping thistles, secretly sucking seeds from the seeming deadheads. No, maybe not. <laughs>